Hello there! How can you create a vending machine in Java? If you are watching this video, chances are that you are learning programming and you want to practice object oriented programming. And you're right, the best way to get better at programming is by creating real programs. In this case, we will be creating a vending machine in Java step by step. I will go straight to the point and show you the process to define how your vending machine should work. I will help you to create an object-oriented design for your vending machine and we will see how to implement it in Java. Our vending machine will be a test base, meaning we will interact with it through the console. In the first part of this tutorial, we will define how our vending machines work. We will create use cases and UML diagrams to define and clarify these requirements. Once we have done this, we will start with the implementation. First, we will create a skeleton, meaning that we will create the classes and the interfaces, but we won't write all the code. This step is important because it will help you to organize the code. Alas, we will complete the implementation, meaning that we will add all the Java code to get our vending machine working. Perfect! First step, defining the vending machine requirements. Programming a vending machine is a very vague statement, therefore this step is essential to understand what exactly our vending machine should do. Let's start by creating a use case. The vending machine will display a welcome message with all products and their prices. Then the vending machine will ask the user to select the product. Then the machine will ask the user to enter the coins where the coins accepted are 5 cents, 10, 20, 50 and 100 cents. Then the vending machine will calculate the total amount inserted by the user. Next, it will calculate the chain and also the minimum number of coins to return. At last, our vending machine will display the chain amount and the coins to the user. So now that we understand our use case better, let's identify the entities of our problem. We will need a vending machine, obviously, also products and coins. And since we are doing calculations like calculating the chain, and the number of coins, another class called calculator will be really helpful because it will give us a place to gather all calculations together. So now that we have identified the entities of our program, let's see how these entities will interact with each other. We will need a main class that is the entry point of the program. And first thing the program needs to do is creating a vending machine and display a welcome message with all products available. Then the user will select the product and then a message will be displayed to request the user to enter the coins. Next, the user will enter the coins and at this point the vending machine will call our calculator class to calculate the total amount inserted, also to calculate the chain, and last display the chain message. This means that we will have two classes containing most of the logic. The vending machine class, which will have all methods to interact with the user, and then the calculator class which will calculate the total amount and the change. As you can see, now we broke down our problem into smaller pieces and it's a lot clearer how our vending machine will work. Plus, this diagram gives us a better understanding 
and how to organize our code. All right, so let's start creating the skeleton for our program. Let's start with one of the key classes, the vending machine. We will create an interface called vending machine. And since we set that the machine should display a welcome message with all products, our interface we have a method called display products. This method doesn't need to return anything, so the return type will be void. Then we need to pass to the vending machine the product selected by the user. So we need another method called select product with one argument, a number representing the product selected. So just a small note here, we will assign identifiers to each product available in our machine in a bit. And let's continue. So the select product method doesn't need to return anything either. So next method. Our next method will request the user to enter coins. And we are going to call this method display enter coins message. Next, we need a method to pass to the vending machine the coins entered by the user. So this method will be called enter coins and the arguments will be an array of integers representing the coins enter. And last, the vending machine will need to display a message indicating the chain. And that's it. Those are all the methods our vending machine needs. Another important class is the calculator class, which will do two calculations. Given a bunch of coins, it will return the total amount. So for this, I will add another class called coin bundle, which contains all coin center. And this method will return an integer which is the total amount. This amount will be expressed in cents, and that's why we are using an integer. If the amount was expressed in dollars or euros, then we will need the float number. And the other thing our calculator will do is calculating the chain. In other words, working out the number of coins to make up the chain. So this method will be called calculate chain and it will take as parameter the amount in cents to return to the user. And it will return an object coin bundle which represents the coins to return to the user. Perfect, so we have created two interfaces, one for the vending machine and another for the calculator. Let's now create the main class, which is the entry point of our program. So we need to create a class and the main method. And first, I will create a scanner class so I can receive input from the user. So new scanner and system.in. Then I will create a vending machine instance and I cannot initialize it because we haven't implemented the class yet. We have just created the interface. Now, if we go back to the diagram we created earlier, next thing is displaying the products. So I will call machine.displayProducts. Now I will call a scanner.nextLine and I will read the products selected by the user. The selected products is on a string right now, so we need to convert it to an integer to pass it to the vending machine. So I will call machine.selectProduct and then the product entered by the user. Next we will request the coins to the user. 
so I will call machine.displayEnterCoins. And as before, we will use a scanner.nextLine to read the coins entered by the user. The coins are in a stream, so we will need to convert it to an array. However, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that now. Uh, we will do this later. Then, passing the coins enter to the vending machine. So I will call machine and dot enter coins. And the last thing our main program will do is display the the chained message. So we will call the display chain method. So now we have defined the main structure of our program. All we need to do is to fill up the methods with the code that will perform all these actions. In the next video, I will show you how to complete the implementation for our vending machine. See you in a bit.